Because some people are. Uh oh. Come on, man. Okay. Brenda will get up and sing a song while she loves this thing. <laughs> okay. There you go. Such a joy to connect um, in a space that is much larger than any building could ever match. And no wonder that, that God always only had one building in mind, not one made with human hands. And it's interesting that the Greek word for temple is the word skenos, where the English word skin comes from. Nothing hosts Father, Son, and Spirit in a bigger and a better capacity than just us being human in our skin. You know, we don't need to try and upgrade into some different kind of animal. <laughs> we, we're in the reality of the fullness of the Godhead, the fullness of deity, bodily, snugly. <laughs> Colossians 2 verse 9. The fullness of deity, bodily, dwells. That word means tabernacles. He didn't come to visit with an overnight bag, you know, for a brief three years of ministry. But he came to find habitation in our skin or in our skin. There's no place in the universe where Father, Son, and Spirit feels more at home than you. And that's the beauty of the gospel. Because it's a gospel that immediately draws my attention into this face-to-faceness where we come from. I love the way John is more than 90 years old when he takes the pen to hand, you know, and he, and he reflects on a beginning larger than just the mere genealogy of Jesus through Matthew's memory and Luke's investigation. But it's a word that began before time was, the logos that was with God. Sadly, our English language falls short to accurately draw in the idea, the nuance of the word, the preposition pros in Greek means Face to face. We come out of a face to faceness. You know, in Genesis 1, Moses records in verse 26 Elohim in conversation, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Isn't it wonderful to begin to understand the cross, to understand the essence of the gospel in context? Nothing else could measure up to the gruesomeness and the betrayal of the one who upholds the universe by the word of his power. But, he, but the redemption always meant to Father, Son, and Spirit, the redemption of image and likeness in human form. And that's the beauty of the gospel. The gospel is earthed in our celebration of Christmas, <laughs> which can become such a, just another Christmas, you know, that's come and gone. But this word is now earthed in flesh because the distance was forever cancelled whatever definition there was of distance my thoughts not your thoughts you know isaiah 55 neither are your ways my way so if we are trying to panel beat is that the word in, in america as well you can't ship shape you know your behavior you're missing the point if it's the thinking that's gone wrong <laughs> your thoughts not my thoughts therefore your ways are not my ways and then he says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and my thoughts higher than yours. And we think, well, there you go. And, you know, many preachers would just close the book there and say, well, God's thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. But thank God for verse 10, Isaiah 55. It draws our attention into a dimension that everyone can relate to. He says, heavens, earth, but just as the snow and the rain come down from heaven and returns not thither without soaking the soil, saturating, it says in our mother tongue is Afrikaans. In the Afrikaans translation, it actually says saturating the soil. And the soil we're talking about is this very beautiful piece of skin suit that we are carrying. We may, might get to the guitar later, but right now, it's just so amazing to realize that, that in our skin, we host that which heaven brings to earth, that which was destined to saturate the soil, every nook and cranny of human life saturated in the man Jesus Christ. The incarnation is the code. Many years ago when we started the murder translation, I wrote a little introduction. I call it the incarnation code. 
It's the very code that unlocks scripture. The entire destiny of the word was not the page or the piece of papyrus or the skin that it was written on, but it was always flesh. I started off, you know, when we had a moment of silence just before the Zoom kicked in, you know, that it reminded me of our younger son, Stefan, playing in a concert. And, and that moment when the orchestra is ready, you know, and he's got to do the piano and there's, there's, there's just the silence. And then suddenly the silence is filled with the first violinist just giving the key and all the other instruments, you know, just touch the instruments, just to do do to engage that specific key, to engage that one. They don't have to restring the old guitar or double bass or violin. It's just a touch. And this word does that. It just touches our hearts in such a way that we hear mother tongue language resounding within us. We hear the word that was before time was. It's not our brief history on planet Earth that introduces us to Father, Son, and Spirit. They say in Jeremiah 1.5, I have known you before I formed you in your mother's womb. We are known and we come to know even as we've always been and known. There's a knowing that takes us beyond our own history, beyond our brief situations that we've come and gone through, our little few little decades that we've lived in and out of. But in the eternity of God, we discover that the word is near unto you. It's even in your mouth and in your heart. And I thought of a little song that, you know, I, I don't write songs or often play the guitar even, so I might get the keys wrong. But um, I love that word that says, the word is near unto you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. We're celebrating our friends who've driven, flown and driven here today after the whole day's work, you know, for how many hours. And all of you out there on Zoom and Facebook Live, we are, we are living in a, in a brand new dimension where Christmas is celebrated with a new reference. The, the joy of Christmas echoes the joy of the ages. I bring you news of great joy. <laughs> great joy. Why? Because in the greatness of God's joy, we are the joy of the Lord, you know. And that's why Paul could write in Philippians chapter 4 without fearing that I've repeated this. I've, I've said this yesterday. He says, I'm going to say it again. Rejoice in the Lord always. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the who? Lord. Of the Lord. <laughs> we don't have to manifest or manufacture and wind up our own joy. We can tap into the joy of the Lord and realize there's a greater joy. And we tap into a resource that is inexhaustible. He dances over you with joy. And that's when he rests in his love. <laughs> Goes into a worldly dance. <clears throat> this is a familiar tune. That years ago, the, the Lord gave me these words. Just to, um, it says, um, "Your word is near unto me. It's in my mouth and my heart. I see there the face of my birth. How I know, as I've always been known." For as you are, so am I. My life is revealed in you. O oh Lord, of your fullness have we all received, and we are complete in you. Your word is near unto me. It's in my mouth and my heart. I see there the face of my birth. And now I know as I've always been known. For as you are, so am I. Your life is revealed in me. And we are complete in you. Oh Lord of the fools, have we all received? And we are complete in you. It's so wonderful that we begin at the finish. 
It just puts the shoots and ladders game out of business. The game called religion, you know, religion desperately needs paying and returning customers so that we can keep this rat race going. You know, of course, you're going to hit the highs from time to time, but then there are the snakes in South Africa. We call it snakes and ladders. The shoots, you know, that the, the dice falls on the wrong number and off you go down to where you just began. And in this beauty, we discover that we begin at the finish. You know, when Paul tells this to us in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 5, many people say to me, well, don't you know the from So the Ephesians was written to the believers. Okay, so chapter 2 verse 5 says, while we were still dead in our trespasses and in our sins, God co-quickened us, co-elevated, raised us, co-elevated and seated us in the throne room, in heavenly places. So Paul didn't invent this idea. He got it from prophet Hosea, who by the spirit of Christ prophesied from within him. When Hosea declared in chapter 6, verse 2, after two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. So when we begin at the finish, it means we begin in tetelestai. The moment when Jesus cried out and he says, it is done. Whatever the prophets spoke has now culminated in the final eschatos of God. Hebrews 1 says, in many and various ways, God spoke. Thank God God spoke. There was no silence from God's side, you know, but the prophets from time to time did go a little bit silent. But they heard by the spirit of Christ within them in fragments of thought. But the entire conversation finds its culmination in sonship who exhibits the glory of God. In having made purification for sins, he sat down. He came to redeem image and likeness, identity, innocence, so that we can be where he is. And that's what we celebrate. You know, we have such a reference in, in scripture that helps us engage with the music that was written before time was. I don't read music, you know, but when I watch our son, when, when back in the day, when he would come visit us in South Africa, in our old house, you know, we converted our garage into the, a study and then we had his grand piano in the one corner and my desk where many of the early days of the mirror bible happened and it was always such a blessing kind of picky about the crazy it was always such a blessing when when chris stefan would come and visit and his piano would be covered in a in a thick blanket because he um none of us play play any piano thank you so much um, Gideon. so our son would come and visit and we we take the decorations off the piano because we've got a blanket over it many boxes piled under it okay. it's a storing house when he's not there but when he comes this piano is exposed you know and those keys get excited because fingers are going to touch them <laughs> skilled fingers that captured music that was heard 200 plus years ago by a composer back in the day and those words were captured on a page and the nuances and the subtleties of the moment that is captured in that page that I might hold upside down because I don't read music. And I see the music reflect in Stefan's eyes when his eyes go moist, looking at this new piece because he hears every instrument, he hears every sound, he hears the music. And that's the beauty of, of, of getting into a world where there is no other agenda. But the romance of the ages, the romance of the ages has found face in the man Jesus Christ. And he's come to introduce us to ourselves again because we humans suffer from forgetfulness. Even the, the younger brother of Jesus, James, he records it in James chapter 1. He says, we, we, we see when we hear the word, and I love the way, you know, James writes about the word because there was a time where James and his other siblings did not believe in Jesus John 7 verse 5 says it clearly. None of his family believed in him. So, and he was homeless at the time. You know, foxes and holes and birds of the air of nest, but the son of man sleeps in the, amongst the olives, you know, and, and he's, he's out there in the field with his disciples. So, so um, uh, <laughs> so when, when the, uh, help me, Lydia. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it's so wonderful. I sometimes just, shh go off somewhere but we're still here we still are you okay everyone on zoom facebook we're still here it's <laughs> and, and and what what we so enjoy is that the the, the the moment that god is captured in in the word has relevance to it 
that matches your situation right now. You might be in a situation that you're facing that feels so, so, so dark. And so how do we get out of this? But, but you know, the disciples, the seasoned fishermen were in a moment like that. When they faced a storm, they thought, this thing's going to sink us. We're not going to get out of this one. And suddenly, Jesus, fast asleep. No, he's woken up. And Lord, do you not care that we perish? And then he awakens the, his faith in the authority of his life and his word in your skin in your moment so it's such a joy to engage with you this evening and just to to bless you with a word that we know will never depart from from the destiny of god god has engaged this word and wrapped this word in skin in you and um mm. yeah yeah, um, I, I did say something about our son Stefan and him playing that music and suddenly that music is destined to become incarnate and the same with the word, you know, it's destined to become incarnate, it was always destined to become flesh, flesh in your skin and in your moment. I'm just going to finish this, for a, this one on Facebook for a moment. I thank you, Father. I thank you for this mind of mine <laughs> and that you help me to just remember and engage with exactly where you're going with this. I thank you, Lord. I think I'm just going to sing another little song. Discover mm. yourself in the mirror of the word. Discover yourself in the mirror of the world, for he has set you free, he has set you free, discover yourself in the mirror of the world, discover yourself in the mirror of the world, for he has set you free. Sets free is free indeed. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And his spirit cries in me. And his spirit cries in me. Abba Father, I'm yours eternal. Abba Father, I'm yours eternally. And his spirit cries in me. And his spirit cries in me. I see everyone in the light of his word. I see everyone in the light of his word. The one has died for all. The one has died for all. One has died for all. I see everyone in the light of his word. I see everyone in the light of his word. For one has died for all. Yes, one has died for all. Now all of mankind is revealed in his love. All of mankind is revealed in his love. All of mankind is revealed in his love. For one has died for all. Yes, one has died. For all, one has died for all. For all of mankind is revealed in his love. For all of mankind is revealed in his love. For one has died for all. One has died for all. Sin shall have no dominion over me. Sin shall have no dominion over me. Sin shall have no dominion over me. For one. The Lord says, when he rose, I was made alive. When he rose, I was made alive. When he rose, I was made, I was made, I was made, I was made alive. Dominion over me, sickness shall have no dominion over me. Sickness 
shall have no dominion over me. Sickness shall have no dominion over me. When he rose, I was made alive. When he rose, I was made alive. When he rose, I was made alive. And fear shall have no dominion over me. Fear shall have no dominion over me. Fear shall have no dominion over me. When he rose, I was made alive. Thank you, Father, that what Hosea wrote 700 years before it happened was recorded in such a way that Paul could write. Now, Hosea wrote 800 years BP before Paul. So Paul had the confidence to write in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 5 that while we were still dead in our trespasses that means without our permission no, it's, it's okay can't get that one going let me leave that so without our permission before we believed it before we had a clue you see faith doesn't become true when you get it like one plus one doesn't become two because you finally get it <laughs> Faith is belief in its truest authentic form when only God believed it. And God called things which were not as though they were. God wasn't going in like mode of, you know, Father, Son, and Spirit, we reckon this is going to happen. <laughs> God announced daylight. God announced you before you knew you. That's why Jesus so confidently can introduce us to ourselves again. Because we've forgotten what manner of person we are. And he's come to remind us. He's come to engage us with the authority of our authentic birth. Us humans share birth. We do. We have birth in common. We began in the only father. The father of lies does not equate. The father of lies is only father of lies. The only true father, according to Ephesians chapter 4. The only true father is the father of light. Yeah. When James finally gets it after the resurrection, he says, in him, there is no variableness. There is no shadow due to change. In his light, do we see the light, sings David, and says 1 John 1 verse 7. In his light, when we discover the light, the fountain of life, to be the true life that defines us, it sets us free to be me. So he's come to introduce us to ourselves again. He asked the greatest question in the Bible, recorded in the Bible, Matthew 13. I'm not into Matthew yet. I hope to get into Matthew in the next so, some years. It's lying ahead of us. But Matthew, Matthew 7, 16, Jesus asked the most important question in the Bible. He says, who do people say that I, the son of, listen, listen to the question. Who do people say that I, the son of man, am? I mean, that's a very relevant question. So who is the son of man? Isn't Jesus there just addressing the entire human problem? Who am I? So he says, who do you say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, well, you know, there's definitely something prophetic. There's profound propheticness in you. You might even be Elijah himself, reincarnate, because we suddenly hear the prophetic word in flesh like we've never imagined it to be. You know, it was always Messiah is going to happen sometime in the future. We always had a date or a person questioning when is this going to happen, but who's going to, who, who will it be? And so when Jesus sits down and says, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing, he's declaring that the moment has arrived. So who do you say? He turns to his disciples, who do you say that, that I am? And, and Simon, not by some kind of Bible study program, by revelation, he says, Jesus, you're it. You're the Messiah. You are the book's all about. And Jesus goes, high five, Mr. Simon. Now that you know who I am, let me introduce you to you. Simon, son of Jonah. Was that a problem? Not at all. 
Simon surnamed Jonah. That's what the word means. That's what I've just been doing in, Colossians, in, in Acts chapter 10. We remember when Cornelius hears, you know, that he got, he's got to send his men to, uh, uh, to, to, to a Simon, the tanner. And Simon, the tanner, is hosting another Simon, surnamed the rock, Kephas in, Hebrew, in Aramaic and Petros in Greek. He says, come on, go to that Simon. Yes, yes Simon gets to, to discover himself for the first time. It's all new to him because he's just said something by revelation. He didn't think this thing through. He said, okay, guys, I think I've got the correct answer. He was just saying, Jesus, the son of man, is the son of God. That's the correct answer. The son of man is the son of God when it comes to you. And Jesus turns to him, Simon, son of Jonah. And I love the thought of Jonah. Jonah in Hebrew and Aramaic is a dove. And it reminds of the beautiful song of songs, chapter two, oh, my dove, in the cleft of the rock. <laughs> Let me hear your voice so I may see your face. This is long before telephone. Have you noticed when someone phones, you haven't seen them for a while, and you know them, how the face pops up. They hear your voice. And when text becomes voice, you can know for sure but there's a face there where you behold the glory of the Lord. But this time not as in a display window, as in a mirror. But I discover he's talking about me. He's engaging my attention with more than just some scrolls, old scrolls that have these documented thoughts. But we hear the music. We hear the song of Father and Son dancing over you with joy. Because they have no knowledge of you outside of their joy. Love keeps no record of wrong. And we're not talking a different God here. There is only one God, Father, Son, and Spirit wrapped up in agape. Agape is the agenda of God. There is no other agenda. He's the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, no interception to the light. There is no shadow due to change. And I love the next verse. That's James chapter one who starts writing. He's cannot, but I'm going to write this. Whoa. He says, I want to encourage you guys, you know, when you meet all kinds of contradictions, contradictions to what? To your identity. Not at all joy. How did you get there, John, uh, James? He says, you know. You see, joy is something connected to who you know you are. Who you know you are. Because I'm not just seeing the face of my birth is in the mirror. And then I go when I go back to my old ugly duckling mindset. It's not about the ugly duckling. It's about the confused swan to begin with. Yeah. So here we have James breaking out in joy because he says, you know, that the testing of your faith, he says in verse 13, further on, if I just keep it, he says, don't say when you are tested, is God testing you. God's not in the teasing or testing business. <laughs> He's in the revealing business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He says, you know, that the testing of your faith produces something that you cannot get hands laid on for. You cannot buy it over a Christian counter. It's called steadfastness. And I struggled with the word steadfastness because it sounds to me like this is going to be difficult. It's uphill all the way. And you're going to have to just work at it, you know. And I grew up in a holiness movement. And I thought, you know, how old do you get before you finally get big Trevor Sin? Because, oh, my goodness. I mean, look at this. You're just going to have to just slog it out. And you're out there and you're trying to just better yourself. At least it's... Very, very soon, soon and very soon. It's going to be the 1st of January, 2023. And suddenly we stand on fresh new threshold. And man, are we good at making resolutions? And this time we mean it. Mean it. And suddenly there's a new meaning. There's a new face on the horizon. When I discover the mirror, he says, Count it all joy. Oh, yes, I want to get back to that word. The, ma the marathon word. You know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. I struggled with the word steadfastness until the Holy Spirit helped me with a picture of a broody hen. Do you know when a hen gets broody? She couldn't care less about what the temperature or weather forecast says because she's creating an environment under her own care. And within that environment, those little eggs that we just see bacon and eggs in, she okay. sees her face. She oh. counts them after a while and still not no change. Measure still the same, exact same size, still the same number of eggs. But she knows something because joy is engaging with what faith knows to be true about you. And faith is in a consistent environment. It's not sitting here for a few hours and then it's really getting boring out here and jumping up. And I'm just quickly catch a few worms while no one's looking. No, you're looking. <laughs> 
you go and sit there and you, you sit there and you engage knowing that there's something invisible to the natural eye that is happening constantly. Life, image life, likeness, image is birthed here. And it's about to break through that captivity, break through that shell. And we live in ostrich world. I tell you what, when those ostrich eggs, when they hatch, it's just the cutest thing to see those old clumsy ostriches getting out of that squeezed in space and they discover themselves and they're whoa, <laughs> yeah, full on ostrich here, you know. And if, if that can happen in nature 24 7 around the clock anywhere on this planet, let me know, let me encourage you to know something about you. He says, let steadfastness have its full effect so that you may be perfect and complete and lacking in nothing. Where do you get that? Where do you get perfect and complete and lacking in nothing? I'm just feeling sorry that I'm not doing this on the Facebook too. So let me just try and get them back on. Um, okay. I'm not going to do that. No, no, no. Then we're going to be distracted. So there's so much feeding. Mm -hmm. Let steadfastness have its full effect. So, Mrs. Broody Hen, don't let nothing interrupt your broodiness. You cannot buy broodiness. Mm -hmm. Just like you cannot buy steadfastness. Mm -hmm. But joy shows you something about you mm -hmm. that keeps broodiness intact because the joy of the Lord is your strength in those difficult times when you feel a bit wobbly in the knees he says the joy of the Lord is your strength the joy of the Lord has come to engage you in that broodiness and it's about to hatch that which is perfect and complete and lacking in nothing you know what do you know what every temptation wants to convince you of how imperfect in lack and in, in incomplete you are <laughs> the very things that are not you see you don't teach math by telling people what two plus two is not yeah and we've done that in all our religions over centuries especially in the evangelical world and it's not this and it's not that's definitely not this but you know in the old days when they when they trained bank tellers they would not let them engage with the fake note they would have to handle the true note again and again and again and again in bundles, then again and again and again, you go through the same because you become acquainted with that which is true about you. And in that place of knowing what is true about me because of his knowing, there's a greater knowing. And the knowing of God takes me in a dimension where my own knowing becomes sometimes so fragile and so a little bit confused and mucky. And then he says, there's a knowing. And in that knowing, I want you to know that in the eyes of the Father, in the light that he walks in, he invites us to enter into that rest where we cease from our own labors, where his rest celebrates you. You see, God did not rest when he saw his image and likeness brilliantly on display in flesh. He wouldn't go into Sabbath mode because even God needed to take a bit of a break. No, God does not grow weary or ex exhausted. Your crisis cannot exhaust the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That can, it, nothing can interrupt their dance. Sabbath is God's signature, like an artist finally puts their brush down, having signed their name. Mm -hmm. Sabbath celebrates you. Yeah. Sabbath celebrates your perfection. And you are invited to enter into his rest. Not your make-believe mode. Take it until you make a mm -hmm. facelift off the facelift trying to become a swan. This is who I am. And my swanness revives my being. Where I'm out of, says Isaiah 40, with wings like an eagle. And now I do what I couldn't do what I couldn't get to with my walking and my running and my exhausting modes of trying to do this and trying to win God's attention and God says I'm mindful of you and we mount up with wings like an eagle and that eagle likeness gets us into soaring mode and soaring mode takes us beyond our own physical strength our physical mind power muscle power all the stuff that we get to do in one day try and package it into yet another day Soaring is not just for the super saints out there. You know, they've really gotten their ducks in their own hands together. It's the mode of our designer. 
it's not a spare wheel in the boot, you know, that when you're when in crisis, you know, call upon God. God, hello, anybody out there? <laughs> it's not. Spirit dimension is not some reward that we get after praying in tongues until our tongues hang out. And we, we really, we try, we just aren't getting back into spirit mode. Spirit mode. It's like our breathing. It's Yahweh finding voice in you. And in that moment, our forgetfulness moves out. So it's still in James. So I love James because I got stuck there for a year -ish at the beginning of the last other mirror. It began, began with James chapter one. That's all I had to, to translate anyway that time. Thank God for that time because I learned something about me that I forgot. He says that the Father of lights with whom there's no variableness. He, the next verse, that's verse 17 of James 1, verse 18 says, He, Egeneto, He brought us forth. He birthed us through the word of truth. <laughs> the word of truth and now james says that which has confused our own old minds oh but um we've got to be doers of the word right yes absolutely so what does doing of the word mean do you know what james does he shows us what it's not i know he said don't do not but look at listen to this he says because when you hear the word and see the face of your birth that's what he says in the greek and you go away. You go away from what? From the hearing, from the engaging, from the broodiness. What happens? Immediately you forget what manner of person you are. So we've made that, okay, okay I, I've forgotten a few times in my life, I can tell you that. And so we've made our forgetfulness our reference. And so we go in fellowship with you. Have you also forgotten? Yeah, I can see in your life. Yeah, I will. And we start a little pity party meet that fellowship, you know, and we just go into a circle. And so you tell me about your problem. I've got a bigger one and a better one to tell. And so we, no wonder we feel defeated when we leave because we'd be not edified. We'd be, we, 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 we defeated. We just denied. And, and when we, when we know the truth about ourselves and engage with that truth, then forgetfulness no longer has its hold and its claim upon my mind. I start living beyond the disappointment because certainly disappointment comes. Storms will break loose against this house. What's the difference? The foundation. Is it sand or is it rock? And that's where I lost it earlier on. When Jesus answers the question, he says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, in the cleft of the rock. You, Mr. Rock, a chip of the old block. He says, let me introduce you to you, Mr. Rock chip of the old block and in the greek it's exactly that you are petros you're a chip of the petra which is the large rock face and the geologists tell me that you know they could take a little splinter of that rock and you cannot believe the marvel of of in under microscopic light and pictures that they capture there the brilliance it's like a painting that you cannot match every little splinter carries the exact pattern the exact pattern of the big rock and so the son of man is the son of god and this is where where james comes into this revelation he says we, we, it gave birth to us and when we hear this word it's like seeing the face of your birth and you remember who you are because you've forgotten but now do not be like the man who hears and then goes away goes where back to his old way of seeing himself back to the old ugly duckling mind and i've got all of these reasons to justify why i think like this and why i feel like this and so don't interrupt me with your faith nonsense listen to where i am and what happened? What, what happens? I immediately forget. And you know what? We've built doctrines upon doctrines of how to get out of the wilderness. Ten steps, 40 years later, you're still in the same wilderness because oh, it's going to take a lifetime to get back. But it's just seeing if we can immediately forget, we might as well immediately remember. Yeah. And remember means to take that which is there and oh. bring it right into the now. And I realize this is who I am. And our fellowship engages with that reality. And suddenly our lives are ignited again. And we can see. And we can realize the fullness of, of um, everything that he desired for me. So this is the, 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 the it's like the, the, um, the cutting edge of the faith of God. God's belief is not something that he tries to convince us of. They do desire to show us more convincingly. But we only have one reference. Our reference is not our story, but their story. History. It is his story that 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 that, that engages us with all that we are. I don't know how how old is this. This is the ninth edition. This would have it because I wanted to share with you tonight um, 
a little bit about Second Peter chapter one. Um, what is this one? It's, 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 if it's got Second Peter, it's fine. This is this is good. This is good. This is very good. This is beautiful because now I just love the way Simon introduces himself. I'm so glad that Simon also learned to write because they were fishermen. Remember, I'm not going to go to that story. That's a beautiful one. But another day, but he introduces himself. Second Peter chapter one and verse one. He says, I am Simon the rock. <laughs> He's identified himself with his true identity. He says, I am Simon the rock. He says, listen to this. I'm a bondman and ambassador of Jesus Christ. We are in this together. It is not something we had to compete for since we are equal shareholders in a faith of exactly the same priceless value. And this rests entirely upon the merit of the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, with our familiar Revised Standard Version or King James, I love the way King James in, in, in starts that. He says, we, we have a like precious faith. So Peter is speaking about a faith, the Revised Standard Version says, a faith of equal standing. Now that's, I remember reading this as a young pastor. I was just so ignited with this because I realized, listen, in all our sport disciplines, there may be place for three guys, you know, or three girls, and, and it's gold, silver, and, and bronze. The rest try again next year. You know, we, it's, it, that's, that's how you compete because, you know, it could be a split se second, a split, a mere split second that separates gold from silver, but the gold gets the glory. The rest of us, we're just not good enough, but we're talking about perfect, complete, and lacking in nothing here to begin with, not to end up with maybe one day. Do you see our prayer life changes? Because instead of praying towards the throne room, praying towards a breakthrough, we're praying from seated together with Christ. We begin to see ourselves seated together with Christ. We don't get there by our belief and muscle and mind. We get there because we are there. Mm -hmm. He says, having, while, while we're still dead in our trespass, we were co-elevated. So uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, um, he says, if then we are raised together with Christ. And remember, Paul says, if in English, it's not a question mark. It's an exclamation mark. He says, if we are raised together with Christ, co-seated together with him, then engage your thoughts with throne room realities. Because it's from the throne room that the reality of God's light dawns in our hearts. Yeah. And we begin to see with new eyes. It's like falling in love. It's like getting broody. Something, it just, it just comes, something happens inside of you. And you just can't get it out of your mind. You know, image and likeness. You kind of bump into it. It's like when you buy a certain color car. And you see, or type of car. Because, yeah, I see they're all black. In South Africa, they're all white. Because if we don't have snow there, you've got the snow. Yes, you've got to see the vehicles. <laughs> That's where we drive the lights on and the sun's gone. Ha! <laughs> So, but when you, you say you, you buy whatever car you see on your mind, you start seeing that type of car all over. It's like, you haven't seen this one. And now all of a sudden, everyone's driving that car. But it's like those puzzles that you used to get, those 3D puzzles, remember? You, you, it's just like a blurry page. And there's supposed to be something there, an eagle or something. You just can't see it. And it really just, you know, you see. And then suddenly it jumps out of the picture and you see it. That's the scene we're talking about. It's gazing. What we have heard, one John one. It was just a rumor, but we've seen it with our eyes. He gazed upon it, touched with our hands, and the word was made manifest. <laughs> and the manifesting of the word is really the, the pudding of the word. It's all it is. It's the milk, it's the meat, it's the pudding. So the Revised Standard Version says, we have received to begin with a faith of equal standing. How did we get an equal standing of faith? He says us through the righteousness of God. What does righteousness mean? What God got right. Not what we did wrong, or Adam did wrong, or we got wrong, what God got right. That's the righteousness of God. Romans 1.16 says, I'm not ashamed. I love it that people, where Paul takes shame out of the equation. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. And just before you go, oh, you see, you've got to try and believe it. No, no, no. It tells you exactly where faith happens. Faith is not something you do, it's something that happens to you when you hear what God has done on your, your behalf. So the next verse, verse 17 of Romans 1, tells you exactly how it happened. He says, in it, in what? In this gospel that I'm not ashamed of. The power of God unto salvation. In it, the righteousness of God is revealed. That puts the righteousness of my efforts to do something, get it right, it puts it out of the equation. It's not my efforts and how I can keep the rules. But it's how God got it right in flesh, in the incarnate one. To live the life of my design. And he's come to introduce me to me in that light. 
And suddenly I'm encircled. Father, Son, and Spirit dancing over me with joy, uninterrupted joy, because their gaze, their mind is full of you. So we have received the faith of equal stand. We could dwell there the entire evening, but I've got a little <laughs> babushka, my youngest, uh, no, my oldest granddaughter, when she was, was a couple of years, she was five years old, when she said to me, and I told when I used this, she says, Opie, this should be called the reflection doll, because the one reflects the other. Okay, so let's, can we put it somewhere where you can see what, shall we, shall we lift this up? Yeah, I want, yeah, I want, I want, I want this to be, to be made visible. We need another. Okay, okay, no, no, but it's, it's so fun to see it. You haven't got another book. Yeah, just give us the, those, those, those three books there. They'll be fine. That's perfect. I don't know how much time you've got. Just stop him when I need to stop. Uh, you want that? Okay. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to. Okay. So I, I hope we can still. Can you see it on the Zoom? This one. Got it, Jeff. No, this is fine. Thank you, my darling. I think that's okay. Hey. It's going to lose it when you go smaller. Okay, so you've got you've got a faith of equal standing. Now you don't get there eventually. You begin there because we've received, and you know what the word "receive" does? It puts reward out of business. We received the faith of equal standing. So in that faith, there are things happening there. I'll just read you the next verse because it just fits in with where we're going. God's desire is that we may know increasingly may now increasingly be overwhelmed with grace as there is divine influence within us and become fully acquainted with the awareness of our oneness. The way he has always known us is realized in Jesus, our master. By his divine engineering, he gifted us with all that it takes to live life to the full. Let me go back to the more familiar translations. Um, uh, he granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. What, what did he do? He granted it to us. Grant? No, no. Yes. He granted it to us. Not rewarded us with something that we've done and accomplished. He granted us everything that it takes to live life to the full, in short. So in this faith, we are aware and overwhelmingly so of the way that he's always known us. Not our knowledge of God that we've made our theology. It's God's knowledge of us. That changes the entire picture. Yeah. Because our belief can be very confusing. And sadly, the Christian community is the most confused community on planet Earth because it's the most divided. That's why right in the beginning of the Mirror Bible, the Bible is the most dangerous book on the planet. It has confused and divided more people than any other book. But it doesn't take anything away from the gold it carries. Because we're after the gold. And the gold is the man Jesus Christ unveiled. Image and likeness revealed and redeemed in flesh, in human form. Isaiah 40 says, all flesh shall see it together. That means we're not going to say, oh, he's living on the wrong side of the planet. We didn't get to see it. Did you see that flash of lightning? It's gone. Or maybe Jesus came, maybe left. Oh, we don't know. He's vanished. <laughs> all flesh shall see it. How's that going to happen? He says, Isaiah 40, one of my most favorite verses, chapters in the Bible. He says, he says I've got Satan, the Jerusalem of warfare is ended. Why? He says, every high place, every mountain, every hill shall be brought low, every valley filled up, every crooked, crooked place made straight, the rough places made smooth. And what, what why, why, why this highway in the wilderness? And that wilderness was real dongas and, and crevices that you couldn't pass. It was impossible to cross that land. And he says, I'm going to do something that's going to take every excuse for, dis, um, for distance and for abandonment out of the equation so that you may know. The glory of God, because it's and the glory of the Lord. That's verse 5, Isaiah 40. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. So where's the glory of God going to be revealed? To Corinthians 3.18. And now, with unveiled faces, we all see the glory of the Lord. But this time it's shocking. It's scandalous, because it's in the mirror. This is the glory of God. Nowhere else in the universe. You're pointing in the wrong direction. And remember, South Africa's on the side. We also go up and you go down. And this, we go this way, that way. It's not out there by in the sky. It's flesh. Yeah. The glory of the Lord is unveiled in flesh. Oh. In your skin. 
in your moment, in your understanding. We know, says 1 John 5, verse 20, we know that the Son of God has come. Okay, we don't debate that. But he's come to do what? To give us a mind to know him who is true. He's given us understanding yeah. to know him who is true. And here's the understanding. 1 John 5, verse 20. We are in him who is true. 1 John 2, 7. It's not a new law that we're preaching. It's the word that was from the beginning. Verse 8. Yet it is new. Remember, this is a 90-year-old man speaking. For the first time, he can write. He was a fisherman when he was young. He couldn't write. He starts writing. He says, how can that which is old be new? He says, yet it is new. Why? What, what do you mean, John? He says, everything that is true of him is equally true of you. Mm -hmm. We know that the Son of God has come. Given us understanding. To know him who is true. And where are we? We are in him who is true. The pin code of the Bible in him. Those two words in him. <laughs> we are in him who is true. So it's so beautiful. So we're overwhelmed with this in himness. This is the reality of our faith. And he's granted us all that it takes to live life to the full. This is exactly what God has always had in mind for us. Everyone of his abundant and priceless promise has pointed to our redeemed participation in our godly origin. I love this. This is his gift to us. In this fellowship, we have escaped the distorted influence of the corrupt cosmic virus of greed. I read, write in the commentary, his image and likeness is redeemed in us. The default settings are restored. We are rebooted to participate in the life of our design. <laughs> then I said, sadly, my mother tongue language in the old Afrikaans translation says, once you've escaped the corruption of the lusts of the flesh, you will be rewarded with a divine nature. Now that's putting the cart before the horses. <laughs> oh, here's what you do. You know, first show to prove to God that you can escape the corruption of the flesh. And then you'll be rewarded to participate in the divine nature. It's the other way around. It's in our participating of engaging with the face of my birth as in a mirror. That's suddenly a new law. And James calls it the law of liberty. That sounds like Paul preaching Romans chapter 5. And then he says, you know, well, in verse 6 of chapter 6, verse 1, he says, they falsely accuse me of saying, let us sin so that grace may abound. He says, by no means. Then we must the entire thing. We still go back to the old way of trying to see ourselves. When you discover swan life, the claim that the old ugly duckling life had on you is broken. He has rescued us out of the dominion of darkness. What is yeah. the dominion of darkness? Yeah. Knowing myself according to the flesh, according to my efforts to be a better person, a better, better this, because I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not that. That's the wrong tree that I'm eating from. But the tree of life engages me with the life of my design. So out of this place, he says, I've escaped the distorted. Um, okay. And then also, and then, and then chapter Unfortunately, I said in the author's Bibles, all repeat the same mistake in the next verse. Chapter 2, verse 1. Says, uh, uh, chapter two, uh, 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Peter 1, verse 5 says, Now, with all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Does that sound familiar? We've been granted all things that, that it takes. We started off with having received a faith, a like precious faith, a faith of equal standing, a faith of exactly the same quality because of what? Because of their righteousness, of what God accomplished in Jesus. Through the knowledge of God, we're overwhelmed with how God sees us and views us. He says, now, guys, now, okay, now that was enough grace. Now I'm going to start teaching the Lord. You've got to add to your faith with all diligence. Add with every effort you can. Add to your faith virtue. The word add to is one of the most beautiful Greek words. And I've written an entire chapter in the beginning of the Mirror Bibles that you can get on your app and everywhere on, on my use of the of etymology. Etymology is a Greek word that speaks of an, the origin of the meaning of the word. So the word that we've translated add to is an interesting Greek word. It's three components. Epi, chore, geo. Epi means in front of life. It's a preposition positions the, the, the word. It's like a teacher standing in front of a class. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, uh, and, uh, yeah. And then the next word is a word that gives it away. Chorus, choir or chorus, which yeah. we derive from the Greek word. Ageo is the Greek word for leading as a shepherd leads their sheep. So that's a choir conductor, isn't it? Suddenly it's a choir conductor. Now it's not adding to faith virtue, but it's discovering something in faith. And the message translation has it corrected out in. It's in faith. It's not somewhere else. It's in the Greek. It says it's in faith. And it's not the word virtue, because the word virtue in the Greek is the word aireo. And aireo 
means elevation. <laughs> so the very first thing that faith unveils is not to show you how defeated you are, how sinful you are, how broken you are, how this and that you are, and that's you which you are not. He says, I want to show you your elevation. I want to in, in, invite you to see you seated together with me. Remember, we're engaging our thoughts. We're not trying to get through the Dhaka rally, you know, with a little, um, uh, help my steward Kariki. You know, one of those little cars that's just not designed for the sand. You know, I've got to try. And then once you win it, you're going to get rewarded with that four by four. No, no, we, we, we're engaging, like we're engaging four by four mode in our thinking. We see ourselves the way the Father sees us. And there's an elevation. You know what happens when you, when you go airborne? And I used to fly little aircraft years, years, years back. And a friend of mine used to fly these um, micro lights. And I was, I was privileged to fly with him over the my, Victoria Falls for about two hours. We just, we just, it's normally a half an hour, 20 minutes. So just for two hours, we were just there. And I, I'll never forget it. We, we like in this, it, lots of forests and elephants there. So we, we're in this forest, in this little micro light with the lawnmower engine kind of thing behind. And so we take off. And when you're airborne, you're airborne. And the moment you're airborne, you cannot take it in. It's just spectacular. I mean, there's just the smoke of the Victoria Falls. And, and you look back and the mighty Zambezi is in, is in full flow. But just, just uh, not even a mile away, less than a mile away, there's an island. And when we took off, there was a herd of elephants swimming through to the air. To, and I look at this and I, and I just tear up. I just, there's just too much to take in. The, and then the gorge, you, know, you just go right, right down. And, and you know what the Holy Spirit said to me? Geographically, you're in exactly the same spot, but your altitude changed. You see, when, when elevation happens, you suddenly find new perspective. You find a brand new horizon. You're not trapped in this cocoon of worrying and anxiety and stuff, you know, and, and depression and, 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 and dependence on this and that and the other. And here I am just stuck in this little cage. I'm elevated. Since then, you are raised together with Christ. Engage your thoughts with throne room realities, not wishful thinking mode, realities. Because in this place of co-elevation, there is a new kind of knowledge that dawns. Do you remember Hebrews says, by faith, we understand that the heavens were made by the word of God. There is an understanding, there is a knowing that takes you beyond academic learning, beyond how many experiences I can relate to. But there's a knowing, there's a place of knowing from a different perspective and a different dimension. It's all there in the second Peter chapter one of the Mirror Bible. Um, and in that knowing, there's a new strength, a new kind of strength that awakens in me. Mm. Remember when Paul prays Ephesians chapter 1? According to the working of his great might, which he worked in Christ when he did what? When he raised him from the dead. You see, we do that in our language and in our history. We measure strength. We would say when we open the car's bonnet, so many horses are hidden or packed in here. Horsepower. Why horsepower? Because in the old days, back in the day, you know, we would measure how, how, how fast or how strong our horses are and how can they carry this vessel to that point. And so horsepower and candle, you know, we've got a spotlight and you say it's a million candlelights strong. So we try and measure it. And Paul says, I want you to engage with a new strength. It's an inexhaustible resource. The young become weary and exhausted, but they that cover, waiting upon the Lord, is an entwining. That's what the Hebrew word means. It's an entwine, entwining. And the Greek word is the word hamapleko. If the eye is hamapleko, if the, if the eye is light, the whole body is full of light. Mm -hmm. There's a strength that engages with you when you start seeing you from God's point of view. Mm -hmm. Where are we now? We are da 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 da. And that mm -hmm. is the strength. Um, this knowledge and then the strength and then out of this strength is born steadfastness <laughs> see it's one thing to be like a rocket and you get air bomb <laughs> you know we, we we have in our language sustainable energy you know it's one thing to to raise the energy level but then suddenly the batteries just go flat on you and you've just got to start over plug it in and there you go again it's a place of sustainable strength that's what we talked about earlier on about James, the broody hen. Never forget the broody hen. Because many times there are situations in your life 
then you just need to get broody about. And you know what makes you broody? Steering the voice. It's a place of intimacy in the entwinement. Waiting can be so boring, but entwining is most exciting. And so in this place of steadfastness, I discover a new kind of devotion. That's the steadfastness. So in the steadfastness, I discover a new kind of devotion. It's amazing how the Read Your Bible, Pray Every Day program mm -hmm. gets replaced with romance. The devotion is not something that can be interrupted after half an hour, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, yet 10 minutes there. It kind of sets the pace for your day, for your night, for your crisis, for your good times, for your bad times. Paul says, I've discovered the secret. What secret, Paul? He says, to be content. Do you know that contentment is the currency of life? Yeah. It's the yeah. currency of life. Yeah. That's wow. a place of contentment. Yeah. <laughs> it's like sitting in that nice soft seat. Here's another one too. You guys want to sit softer than what you are. Here's a nice soft one. There's a soft one. I'll, I'll be finished in a very short time now. And look, I, I'm, I'm running out of I'm running out of reflection dolls. So, <laughs> so this place of devotion brings an entire new perspective to the equation. It brings what Peter calls brotherly affection. So my worship, my devotion, is no longer dependent on how I can get to keep my eyes closed because I've got a certain sister or brother that irritates me and they also say, so I'm just worshiping with my eyes closed. I just want to focus on Jesus. <laughs> you know what James says, James chapter 3 verse 9, he says we can say the most beautiful things about God and use the same tongue to curse another. Why? It's not what the other did to deserve the curse. He says, an image bearer. Mm -hmm. It's the image that we are connecting. Wow. It's the image in one another that's, that fuels faith. And we realize, my goodness, I am dealing with a particular, particular moment in this person that can never be repeated in another person. Because in the uniqueness of our DNA, of our fingerprint, God has embraced their image in this one. And the brotherly affection is now the result of a devotion that is, that is re, a, 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 a devotion that is revealed in, a, in the broodiness that comes from, a, from this, this place of, 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 of steadfastness and strength and knowledge and the faith, the same faith. And, and the heart of the entire operation, the entire operation of every quality, every divine attribute. Remember, he has granted to us all that it takes to live life to the full. Mm -hmm. Now, we are in an age where little, little sizes no longer measure yeah. anything. It just shows my ignorance sometimes. You know, we yeah. carry in our pockets devices, mobile devices that carries libraries, libraries and volumes of whatever you can carry in your gigabytes and your terabytes. And here we've got the heart of the entire operation, the agape, this little one. Okay, it's still there. It's on the board. <laughs> okay, it's somewhere there. <laughs> All right. The, the point of it is that this little guy, is the heart of the entire operation. How does faith work? Hear Brother King James. Faith worketh by love. It's the agape that ignites the entire reality of all that it takes to live life to the full. Now, if anyone says that these things, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Now, he says in the next verse, I'm just skipping all the other verses because you can't read it. If, if verse 9 says, if anyone feels that these things are absent in their life. They are not. Spiritual blindness and short-sightedness uh, short only veil them from you. This happens when one loses sight of one's innocence. <laughs> Having made purification for sins, he said, the throne of heaven endorses your redeemed innocence. We begin there. We don't end up there at the end of the ladder throwing dices to get there. We are engaging with that which is perfect and complete and lacking in nothing. In this picture, you are perfect and complete and you are lacking in nothing. Wow. Nothing. Nothing. We are engaged with 
fullness, the fullness of the God bodily dwells in Jesus Christ. And we are complete in him. Complete, complete, complete in him. We are complete in him. Hallelujah. We sang that with the Fisher folks back in the 80s. And it was Paul who wrote the song. And we just didn't get it. Wow, what a moment we live in. We suddenly, we, we get to measure up to not just to our most holy expectations, but to the fullness of the provision of God who has engaged us in a completeness that cannot be interfered with. There we are. And just for the sake of the, there it is. You've got it. This is you, packaged in the reflection doll. Now, So you can go and read it. It's the entire chapter of Second Peter chapter 1. And then when he speaks about, you know, making all effort to, to engage, it's the word spudo. Spudo is where we get the English word speed from. It means to immediately engage. Not with how we can forget, but how we can remember. Immediate engagement to you. There's something about it that just takes the sweat out of it. It's not some kind of struggling to get there. It's the realizing that who I am. And from that place of my I amness, the brilliance has happened. So, Father, we thank you for this beautiful word. There's one more little song that I'm going to sing to you. It's also a lovely song that we often sing in Africa. In most countries in Africa, they have beautiful words to it. And then one day I was on my way to preach and I heard this beautiful new language. It says, uh, Jesus is my righteousness. He redeemed. He reveals my innocence. He reveals my innocence. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my righteousness. He reveals my innocence. He is my identity. He is my identity. In Him I am really free. Yeah, I am free. Is my identity in him I am really free. Jesus is my righteousness, my righteousness, he reveals my innocence, he reveals my innocence. Jesus is my righteousness, he reveals my innocence, he is my identity. In him I am really free. He is my identity. In him I am really free. In him we live. In him we move. In him we learn. In him we grow. In him we have our being. In him we live. In him we move. song that you wake up with in the morning it's much better than a few others that I won't mention some of those songs come sit so big so many no I'm good I know you are the Holy Spirit reminded me um, before we came I'm sitting in my chair that was it on the Zoom. I like you next to me. We thought that was the way. Hence the two chairs. Before we came on our trip now, my daughter-in-law blessed me. She says, Mama, you must go for a manic manicure and a pedicure. Hmm. So, oh, it's such a treat, and um, it didn't, it, it worked fine, but this is just my patch-up, so it, it looks really funny. It was beautiful, but anyway, now I'm sitting in this beautiful place in Cape Town, and I did my feet first, 
I was just sitting there looking at this beautiful lady working on my feet and other ones I'm buttering my hands. And I suddenly realized, I said to her, all you're doing is you're just taking dead skin off. It's the, the problem is it's that dead skin that crusts around your ankles or your toes or your hands or whatever. So they soak it and then they Super. rub it and then they scrub it. <laughs> I said to her, that is really our problem. We've become so crusted over <laughs> in our minds and we've had to, um, I remember once I was cleaning a swimming pool that didn't want to clean anymore. I couldn't understand. I'm backwashing and going and the filter didn't seem to work. So I opened up with fun. So we opened up the, the sand pit, whatever. Sand filter. And you know what happened? Because of all the sunblock and everything, it became like a, a ant you know, and little hill, all these little parts that the water had went in this side, choo -choo 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 -choo, on the same road, it would go back, choo -choo 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 -choo. Mm. and it would not clean because it had a little path that it mm. was going through. And we've done that in our minds, mm. we've done that in our thoughts, we've done that in our conscious consciousness, our understanding of God. And when I'm sitting there, I was so touched. <laughs> It's not a problem at all. I said to this lady, and I said to her, how much God loves us. How delightful he finds us. And she looked at me like, can it possibly be? I said, go and soak. <laughs> go and soak a little bit. Go and soak and allow the Holy Spirit to just get rid of those dead skins, the little callousness, the, so that it's just this. And I said, you know what's the best place to soak? And I leaned onto her. I said, this is how we soak with God. And she just started crying and I was crying. And then the other ladies were crying. It was just such a moment, a Holy Spirit visitation moment of, just so, just allow our consciousness of I'm so, so holy. I am so pure. The most holy, amazing God of the universe has found inside of me a place they call home. Yeah. Home. <laughs> and there's nothing that can substitute that. Mm. We can tell you a lot of beautiful things that's going to leave your jaw hanging. Mm -hmm. But unless we take the essence of it, which is that just yeah. knowing he's always been there, we just didn't mm. know it. He's just always been there. Mm. And now to say to one another, when we meet them in Walmart or wherever, <laughs> we can be that closeness to them. Mm -hmm. When we look at them, we look at them in innocence. We look at them as the redeemed of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You beautiful saint, you beautiful, mm -hmm. amazing creature. And that knowledge just carries over to yeah. them. They don't know why they enjoy your company. Yeah. It's because they've never felt so at home yeah. and so loved and nothing left to do. Nothing left to do. Nothing left to do. <laughs> nothing yeah, left to do. <laughs> it's so beautiful, my baby. It's so That's beautiful. True. Nothing left to do, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What can I bring to the table? I'm a worker. I love working. I really do. I will sit at home and do, and then I'll jump up and I think, oh, let's go and plant some grass. Let's go and do work on the road or whatever. So I love. And then when we go and visit friends, I always, I'm at the place. I will say, can I set the table? Can I do this? Can I do that? Whatever. Just to be involved. 
yeah, the Lord invites us. He said, I want to have prepared a feast for you. <laughs> a feast that's going to make your mouth drool. <laughs> yes. And we can say, oh, Lord, can I, can I just help you set the table? It's no sweetie. <laughs> can I bring something? Oh, what we bring is our abandonment to this love affair. That is what we bring to the table. We bring ourselves abandoned. We bring ourselves as, I've given up on this love. It's what, who said it's free falling? Yeah, no, we'll sit down in the knees. It's free yeah, falling yeah. into a love that was initiated before time was. Yeah. That was initiated in a place of oneness. And God said, God said to themselves, we're going to put them in a meat box. We're going to dress them in skin where the senses rule. And God said, they will not forget. They will not forget. I'm so convinced that they will not forget that I'm going to enter into my rest. And God did it. He's entered into his rest forever because he knows we will not forget because image and likeness is the call of the human race. We want to find equality. We want to find what measures up to me. And we thought it's how smart, how rich, how whatever. What measures up to me is the image of God exactly. gazing into my face and saying, my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful child, my beloved, my little one. <laughs> <laughs> it's so beautiful, it's so beautiful. <laughs> and we will travel around the world again just to come and tell you this just to tell you this <laughs> we can do the same with the rest if you want to <laughs> the boundary lines have mm. fallen for me in pleasant places surely I have a delightful inheritance, and there is fullness of joy in your presence, and I will dwell in the heart of my Father, and in his right hand there are pleasures forever. In the Sabbath rain, into the Sabbath rain. Thank you. What a beautiful place. What a beautiful place. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. Mm. 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 places, surely I have a delightful inheritance, and there is fullness of joy.
when you say that you started out, and I guess I don't know, it wasn't country or anything. Like you started out in like an African language, and then you went into the. Upstairs, no, we're outside. We're going to have to sit around the table. Jesu, Jesu. Why are you looking for me? I was thinking now when you talk about my inheritance, the boundary lines, and um, the other day when. We were talking again about Peter and this amazing white tablecloth that came and, and the Lord said to him, Come and eat. And while we were singing that inheritance is beautiful, I realized that the ones that whoever, wherever, whatever they are, that we've termed as unholy, common, unclean. Yeah. That's our inheritance. Ask of me. <laughs> Today I have begotten we you. Ask of me. We made of me. our inheritance. Mm. They're waiting for us to possess them. Mm. You know, num, 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 num them. Yeah. Devour them. Eat them. Make them part of our... They, they've been outside with little bells around their necks. You're not this or you're not that. Or you're not straight or you're not this or whatever. Yeah. And now God says... Go and eat. Have a feast. I've prepared a feast mm. for you. And face to face, we will find Christ in one another. Mm. Like we've never... In the most unlikely. Totally, mm. totally. He's hiding, waiting. Oh, you think this is amazing. Yeah. I've got surprises for you. Yeah. <laughs> I've got my amazingness the, wrapped up in Yeah. They asked Mother Teresa, you know, what motivates her to go out on the streets of Kolkata in these odd hours of the morning? She says, I go to minister to my Lord in his most disturbing disguises. <laughs> what an adventure awaits. Totally. <laughs> it depends on how they wanted all creation and waiting. Exactly. For us to be revealed to them. And that's how he's really totally. coming back is when he's revealed to them. Yes, yeah. totally. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna see kinship. Mm -hmm. They're going to recognize, oh, do yeah. you also come from there? <laughs> <laughs> that voice, that, that accent is like giving us away. Yeah. You come from there. Yeah. For an so beautiful. Mm. So beautiful. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, Traveling from wherever to be here so with much. us. Okay. Yeah.